Welcome to the Slamming Door Sessions, a reality creation podcast where we slam the door to anything that is not our idea. With your amazing hosts, Kristen M.F. Clark and authentic Cynthia Sena Serravache. Join us in a radical embodiment of our ideal states. everyone welcome back to a new episode of the slamming door sessions podcast my name is cynthia my state currently is authentic cynthia and i'm here with a wonderful kristen mf clark uh thank you for being here with us today and welcome back if you have been with us before thank you so much for your support and uh, yeah we have a very interesting very very interesting podcast today that i don't even know what's going to be about but i know that it was amazing as usual <laughs> so yeah Perfect. Kristen. <laughs> you know before we started this Cynthia and I were just we always do this we chat a little bit before we start the podcast and of course everything coming out of her was such gold that I was like going we need to start the recording <laughs> right now because she was talking about we both were talking about how you'll be reading about something or you know and and you could be reading a whole book on you know spirituality or whatever and one section will catch your attention and it'll like spark you up and you're like ooh, and then all of a sudden here comes from another direction a program or a meme or a magazine article or something about that exact thing that caught your attention and it it's and i was telling her that um a lot of times i'll wake up in the morning and i'm just sitting there and 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 uh something stirs up something i haven't thought about in a long time like maybe a lot of times i i call things echoes echoes are you know just versions of you that come back around and they can't hurt you they're just echoes but anyway and i'll be thinking about that and Facebook will pull up a memory from a year ago or five years ago, and it'll be an entire, you know, article I wrote or something about echoes. And I'm just like on, you know, is this it, on this day, three years ago, <laughs> I was thinking about echoes and this morning that pops up and it's like going, is that amazing? What, you know, it's kind of like the chicken or the egg. Which one came first? The memory, you know, the 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 I was thinking that this morning, so I manifested a quote unquote memory. Or what, you know, it's it's so fun. But I love what you were talking about. So go back to what you were talking about. Yeah. So what I was telling Kristen is that lately I've been thinking about manifesting physical changes and like the subject in general, maybe things that I would like to do, but the subject of manifesting physical changes in general. And so I started reading this book that I mentioned before, Meta Human by Deepak Chopra. And so, okay, so I started it. I think I only read like a few couple of pages and then uh, I, I was doing other things and then I kept reading and I had already thought about the physical changes. And all of a sudden in the book, the, he, he starts talking about how the body or, you know, yeah, the image that we have about our body and the body itself is just part of the illusion that we live in. And, and it's a mind construct, right? And okay, so that was interesting. I was like, oh, look, like what I was thinking about the other day, you know, that that's very interesting. And I'm looking forward to keep reading about it. And I know that he will move to other subjects but it's such an interesting thing that the first thing that or the first example that he uses is exactly the thing that I was thinking about and then this weekend yeah so we're Wednesday so over the weekend I you know I was just still thinking about it and and all of a sudden this program shows up like this um it, it was an ad for a program of this guy from Spain. I don't remember his name right now. Um, he has a program dedicated to teaching anti-aging anti uh, from like how aging is actually a, a, a consequence of your beliefs and how you can change your beliefs 
for anti-aging. And it's for me, it's the first time that I see someone dedicating a whole program to anti-aging from this perspective of aging being a consequence of your beliefs. And I was like, oh my God, this is so interesting. So I bought it and I'm reading it. And I started reading today and all of a sudden I start seeing that what he says is pretty much the same thing that Deepak Chopra is saying in his other in this other book. And I'm like, like, oh my God, I love that I become interested in something and I want to learn about something. And all of a sudden I give myself this information through these things that, oh, I start reading a book that has nothing to do. Like, I don't even know what the book was about, Metahuman, when I started reading it. I started because someone quoted something and I was like, oh, that's so interesting. So I started reading it and all of a sudden, he starts with this example and then this guy comes up with this uh, new program and I was like oh that's so interesting and I feel like you know I'm giving myself this information that I was thinking about that I wanted to learn more about from these different avenues and I am so you know so happy and so happy reading about it um but yeah I don't know why we were <laughs> I'm just, I think you know, it's isn't it amazing how you're just instantly manifesting what lit you up, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's of no consequence to your existence or anything like that. It was just something exciting and something that perked your interest. And yeah. the minute you're reading MetaHuman, you didn't even expect this, this subject to be in there, but it is. And you're like, Ooh, and it, and then all of a sudden here comes all these other you know, sources of such a fantastic subject. And, yeah. you know, there, and it's funny, because I know whoever's listening to us is now thinking of examples of other authors or, or, you know, famous speakers who have talked about this. And it's, it's amazing how we do that, how our mind immediately comes up with memories. And for those of you guys that are on the podcast, I just did air quotes for memories. Um, <laughs> memories always, all memories are, are thoughts that support your current state of being. That's it. That's all memories are. We will say, oh no, this, I experienced this. I saw this. I, I felt this. I had this mood at one point. I had, you know, I went through this at one point, but you have no way of proving that. You have absolutely zero way of proving it other than this thing you're calling a memory. And, you know, you, it's amazing how we will manifest so much to concrete those memories you know a person another person will manifest another person called a brother or a sister or a mother or a father or whatever to say oh yes i was there and i experienced that with you and now you know we're we're, we're just going we're just we're just you know weaving our magic like crazy but i'm getting way off topic yeah. um something before we start with the actual topic of today's <laughs> podcast the that I want topic. to say um, <laughs> is that it's so interesting because for me I was thinking about physical changes when I started thinking about it and considering like oh but it, it's it's kind of hard you know like I I was coming from that belief and I was like no, I don't like that. So by, uh, by not accepting that, now I'm just giving myself all these examples of people saying like, it's so easy. easy, like it's just your beliefs, change your beliefs, change your appearance. And they give me all these examples of people changing their appearances, like drastical ways. And I'll, I just love it because I am giving myself this information so that... I am the person who knows that making those things is easy because that is the person that I decided that I want to be, you know? So it's just like, no, I don't like thinking that it's hard. I don't like think that it's like, because it, it isn't, you know, it's like manifesting anything else. So I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to choose not to believe that it's hard. And all of a sudden, all these things are like, look, it's easy, easy, easy. <laughs> you know? And I love it. It is, you know, how cool. There's um, <clears throat> the headless way. I always bring that one up and they talk about how if you're not looking at a reflective surface like me, I'm looking, I can see myself on here. You can't see yourself. 
you have no way of knowing what your image is. You can't see your face. I can kind of like if I'm not if I'm looking away from the screen, I can kind of see my nose kind of but it's blurry. You cannot see your face. And the only way you know what you look like is by looking in a reflective surface. And in that instant, before you look into the reflective surface, you come up with, I am female, I am blonde, I have green eyes, I have this and this and this and this. And poof, there you are. There's the poof, the proof and the poof. <laughs> uh, and isn't that fascinating to be able to go, oh. You know, I, I can change it. I can yeah. play in changing this. And now that I remember, you know, one <laughs> of the reasons why I started thinking about this subject is because I was reading this <laughs> other book that I mentioned before that was uh, Teachings of the Masters of the Far East. And one of the things that they say that they do is basically creating other bodies that they put in places like like they leave one of their bodies in this place to protect a village or something because they are so respected by animals and other beings or whatever that no one dares to do anything bad when they are around so when they or this version of them is not around they create another body of theirs and they leave it in the place to like a to protection and i was like these people over here creating new bodies. Like, are you telling me that we have to believe that we age? Like, what? Yeah, yeah no. You know, and they and I remember when I was reading that book, I think one of the guy, like the the main guide in the beginning was like 500 years old or something like yeah. that. And yeah, he'd astral project out of this body and, and he wouldn't worry about that body. He knew it was, it was perfectly safe where it was laying in the forest with, you know, without his consciousness in it. And he would go, you know, over here and, and he would meet up with this group that left two weeks before. And they would be like, how did you beat us here? And he's just like, I'm not really here or, or I am or whatever. It was, it's so fascinating. It, it's, and you know, I'm going to tell you, I went for a hike with a girlfriend of mine and she was just really bombarding me with questions um, about, well, what do you think about manif uh, manifestation? What do you think of law of attraction? Cause this is all new to her. And, and you know, the, it, it was so funny cause there was this part of me that was like, I, I can't answer. <laughs> I, I, it wasn't that I can't answer. It was just like, I don't want to answer. I'm not interested in what you're saying. I'm just interested in life, in where I'm at, in this moment right now, which is hiking in this beautiful view and this amazing weather and the animals. I mean, we, we had the most interesting start of our hike. We saw, she goes, is that a rabbit? And it, we're, I'm looking off in the distance and there's this enormous beast with huge ears. And I'm like going, that looks like a jackrabbit, but I've never, ever, ever seen one. I mean, it was like the size of a dog. And I'm like, that can't be right. It must be a piece of wood in like a, in the shape of a rabbit. Cause there's no way that's real. And we both, she's like, got her phone out. We're looking at it. And I'm like, I'm walking over there because this is not real. And she goes, it's ear moved. And I'm like, no, it didn't. You're imagining it. And we're just playing this whole game. And it was real. And it, as I started walking towards it, it hopped off and I went, holy cow this is that's just unreal to see a jackrabbit that big number one i've never seen jackrabbit around here ever number two it was enormous anyway but uh, you know and then we're we're hiking and she goes what's that sound and i'm like it's cicadas and it's this type of insect that only hatches out like once every I know there's certain ones that it's only once every 17 years or whatever here I have no idea and I never even knew they were around here and I'm like those are cicadas and all of a sudden we found this tree and it was almost like it was decorated with all these little cicadas are this this insect that'll climb up the tree attached to a branch and then shed its skin so it can get bigger and have wings now just like a caterpillar and a butterfly and it this tree was decorated with all these little 
carcasses, <laughs> all these little skins. And it was just so, you know, that was interesting to me. That was amazing to me. And she wanted to ask all these questions of stuff that I was like going, I, I really am not interested in what it is you're, which is weird because I can distinctly remember wanting somebody to answer me, ask me those questions so I could just teach them the right way to think, you know? And now it's like, <laughs> it, was, it was just weird. It was so weird to be in a space where I was like, that's not me anymore. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that until she was asking that. And it's, it's like you said, you know, I don't even know what the point I'm trying to get here is, is other than we, we really do shift selves per, you know, we think we know who we are. And then all of a sudden there's this enormous shift and you're going, I don't recognize myself. I don't know who I am. And it's, it's, it's discerning, but it's exciting because it's wide open to all the different ways you get to be all the new exciting, you know, and I, I remember I started out this year with this. I don't, I was saying at the end of March, I didn't want to recognize myself. And then we started over again, right? We're in the second quarter. And I was saying, come June, July, I don't want to recognize myself again. And here, you know, it, it's, it's amazing what we can do. And I'm very excited about the subject of the body, you know, what we can do, yeah. how yeah. we can change our appearance and how we do. Yeah. And I, I, I'm feeling like I'm coming at this from this space of play you know like when I was reading about this guy leaving a body here another body there and creating new bodies I was like wait wow you know like all the implications whether you believe that he does that or you don't doesn't matter but the fact is that if you believe in manifestation if you believe in the love assumption if you believe that we're conscious and if you believe in those things then why, why wouldn't be able to do that <laughs> you know but wouldn't be, be yeah. able to do it and yeah. so it's this idea of okay let, let's play you know and all of a sudden so that book kind of started me thinking about playing and seeing okay what are we not able to do but what am I going to do about it basically because it's not that we're able or not able even if I want to do something that it's never been heard before doesn't mean that it's impossible. It just means that I might be the first one to do it. You know, it's just that. And so I was thinking, oh, this is so interesting. Like, I want to play with it. And then the Deepak Chopra book showed up. And then this uh, <laughs> uh, course, this program showed up. And I'm just, I don't know. I'm immersed in this. And I'm just thinking about it. And I'm excited about it. So I'm just going to play with it. That's basically it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. You're like, I want to play with that. And poof. Yeah. Proof is in the poof. It isn't it, isn't it amazing? Isn't it wonderful? And I really, if I go in my memories back through my whole life, that has been the theme one after another. I wanted to get into clairvoyance, poof. I wanted to get into animal communication, poof. You know, all of a sudden I can find, I manifest. And there it is. There's, there's the proof of manifestation. You think about something and then, oh, God, I was just thinking about that today. And look, it showed up. Yeah, that's why I always say instant manifest, you know, the belief that instant ma your manifestations aren't instant is just preposterous. It's ridiculous. It's, it happens all the and it happens so easily and so normally that we miss it. We, we, we're, we're so busy looking for something that's already there that is just so normal that we miss it. We're like, oh, no, no, it can't be that easy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. So um, what Cynthia and I were talking about doing for today is I have received, well, just like my friend when we were hiking, I received questions that I found very interesting. And, and some of these questions, here's those air quotes again, um, 
I had to turn into a question because they were they may have been more of a comment and um but one I think the one I want to start with is this because I think everybody can relate here um a friend of mine was saying she's getting frustrated because her big desires her big manifestations the one here's the button in the castle the one that she really 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 wants is not happening and she wants to know what is she doing wrong so mm -hmm. i'm gonna pose that to you and let you <laughs> go at that how you want oh my god <laughs> uh first of all thank you dear friend for sharing her you know her experience with us and yeah the big you know oh my god <laughs> the yeah the big the big the big um i think that first of all you know the label big is like one of the things that can make us think that somehow we need it or that you know like we are lacking something important in our lives so I think that already that label is interesting and I guess that when she's saying the big one it means that she's manifesting other things like she's aware that she's manifesting other things and is she manifesting consciously or how does that work <laughs> yeah I know it's hard to answer a question when you don't have a person here to clarify things yeah but if yeah I think that first of all the the focus on this being big and second the belief that she's doing something wrong are like the things that she, are like calling me in terms of what she said so yes. yeah I think that she's not doing anything wrong and just recognizing that she's not doing anything wrong would be like the first step you know like she's not doing anything wrong and she can't do anything wrong and yeah just becoming aware of that and maybe I think we were talking about it or was I just thinking about it <laughs> but yeah you know I think I posted something on my Instagram uh that was about uh getting the satisfaction from within you know yeah. i think it's my last post on instagram and i was <laughs> i love the things that i post on instagram because when i posted get the satisfaction <laughs> from within it's because i was actually just before i posted it kind of meditating telling that to myself and it was funny right because uh something happened that or I was kind of expecting something to happen in the physical world right and it didn't happen and then all of a sudden I felt this feeling or I just realized I became aware that I was expecting the physical world to give me a satisfaction that I was craving and so I was like wait a minute I don't like this feeling first of all you know so if I don't like it I don't need to continue feeling it so I relaxed closed my eyes took a deep, few deep breaths and then I imagined what I wanted to happen because I wanted to feel the feeling of satisfaction so I went to imagination to feel it right and then I, I said to myself, you know, get the satisfaction from within. It just came into my mind, like a message to myself. And I was like, ooh, I need to share that. So I posted it on Instagram. But it was so amazing to realize the contrast of me wanting something to happen to feel satisfied versus me feeling satisfied only because I went within and I give myself that experience and just the contrast right then and there of those two situations so 
I think that whenever we label something as big, it's because we are expecting some kind of satisfaction from the physical world. And the big means that we believe that we are lacking something important. Like we are lacking something that makes us feel or, or either valued or, you know, that is going to add something that we currently don't have. And I think that that is a lie because we have it all right now. So I, I think that the only thing that needs to happen is just to change the perspective, you know? Like the realization of the perfection that she already is. So she's not doing anything wrong. And the realization that what she's craving is not for something to happen on the exterior, but she's kind of craving for her to change the image that she has of herself. Yes. Ooh. And look what we started with that subject about changing the image of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, you were so right on track um, about that feeling of satisfaction because you do, you get down to the base of, well, what is it you want to feel here? And it's like, I mean, what this thing, this big thing you're trying to manifest, what would it create in you? What feeling, what, you know, sensation, what, what sense of security, whatever is this? And usually it's a sense of security. And like you said, you find that within, you find it, you know, you can just imagine the situation happening and you can just go there and play in your imagination and, and feel it for the split second. But it's, you know, it's, it's interesting when you, when these kind of questions come up, because it's just like that situation of you going, oh, what I want, I want this, it's not here how do I get it? all these things that seem to be happening and seem to be taking up your entire day aren't it's just a blip it's the tiniest blip of your existence and in your existence every I mean you've got shoes on your feet you've got feet you've got roof over your head you got walls you got bed you got all this stuff happening all around you constantly you're constantly manifesting the water you're drinking the 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 coffee the phone the whatever you're listening to us on you're you're doing so much all the time and whatever you're thinking about right now feels like it is your whole world it's like oh this podcast just feels like it's a huge aspect of my life right now but it's not it's it's the tiniest blip of today and so many other things are going to happen today and it's it, it really i don't even know what it is i'm trying to say here other than i just always when I do, because I have the same situation where I'm like, oh, I wanted to have, I don't know, my own house. I want to have my own house, a house that's under my name. And this is a good subject for both of us. Um, you know, that's mine. That's, you know, a place of, and, and again, here's a place of security where I can have all my stuff and I can feel like I don't have to find another place to stay because the owners are, you know, it, it, that feels like that's part, a huge part of my world right now is that I don't have my own house. And here I am at this age and I can make a big deal about it. I can make it big or I can just go, you know, I am so blessed right now i'm so outrageously blessed all this amazing stuff i have and i wanted to have a podcast with somebody just like you and poof there it is it's always there's so much poof happening around us that when you switch your attention to the poofs <laughs> like i said your feet your the roof the the couch behind me the beautiful sun coming up i mean now that's a big poof <laughs> the sun coming up that's a pretty damn big poof and when you compare and look at all this amazingness around you that you do you raise that sun and then you compare this other thing you want to it it's like for me it's like oh i am okay i'm doing amazingly well i raise a flipping sun i woke up this morning and I have two feet and two hands and, and, you know, the, while 
I can remember a part of me that would be like, yeah, 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 I know. But I want that billion dollars. You know, I want it. You, you, you have it. You, you have it. You, you are it. It's, 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 it's funny. I, I don't know. What, what do you want to say? Yeah. Um, I think that basically what you're saying is pretty much having a change in perspective, you know, it's, uh, going from lack so basically is this feeling of lack something big is missing from my life like how can I change that feeling into something else and one of the things is what I mentioned go within and give that to yourself so that you can feel the satisfaction now regardless of what's happening in the physical world and now the other thing that you are sharing is a different kind of change into perspective which is change the perspective from lack into abundance and recognize the abundance that it's already in your life because that is going to also move you from lack into abundance basically into lack from lack into oh look at all the things that i have look at all the things that i've already manifested if she's already consciously manifesting recognizing all the things that she's already done uh recognizing all the things that she manifests every day you know it's like this confidence boost of oh look I manifest I choose I decide so it's always moving from lack into the abundance that is already there either already present in the physical world or in the preview that you have within your imagination you know which is the preview of what's going to come in the physical world but yeah that experience it's just a choice. Like you can move from lack into abundance because you choose to by recognizing that it's already there and by giving what you want within before it happens physically. But that is the movement that needs to happen from lack into recognizing the abundance that it's already there within yeah. and without. Yeah. You know, and I, and this kind of goes into the next question is about going back to what this whole past month has been. The theme of our podcast is about not responding. And, you know, I find that the more I try to answer a question like this, the more I can't, you know, the more it doesn't quite make sense. It's like we can explain a thousand different avenues to answer this question. And yet it's never going to give that satisfaction that's just right here yeah right it's like we're trying to find the satisfaction (laughs) of answering this question when that was just the base it's just like don't respond don't respond to this part of you that's going I don't understand yeah I don't know I don't respond to that and just by the simple action of not responding you just gave your answer you're just like I of course I understand. Of course I understand. And just leaving it, even not even doing, not even responding as far as that. And I was just thinking about something. I believe that I was reading in the Meta Human book. Uh, he was giving these examples of these people that were in physical pain, like very very painful (laughs) experiences and that somehow had this spontaneous experience of mental peace and that they were so amazed that oh my god how can I be in peace when at the same time I have all this pain in my body and that is another example of how What's happening in the outside does not need to define the experience that you're having within, like how you are feeling, you know, because to this person, we can say a million different things and be discussing this subject for years. But until she decides to give herself the satisfaction, until she decides to feel that, nothing's going to change. Like uh, I can, I'm not going to go like here and say, yeah, the satisfaction, you know, she needs to feel that for herself because she needs to give that to herself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like, yeah. 
uh, again, it always, for me, it's always about going back to that simplicity, just the simplicity, you know, it, it's, it, uh, and you know, it's so funny. I love when you're saying you're reading this book and I'm like going, and in that moment, you're manifesting all of that. You're manifesting exactly what you wanted to read and it's there. And it's poof, 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 poof. Yeah. And I, I, but again, oh, I love the simplicity within not responding and then i also love what arises the amazingness that arises from the non-response so that is that is one of the questions it's it's um do you think not responding helps you get to your desires quicker and can you give more examples of not responding i just did <laughs> you know do you think not responding helps you to get to your desires quicker? Right now, I am playing with that. Yes. I know there's going to come a time where it's going to get even easier than that. But my desire was to find a shortcut, to find more and more shortcuts. And this arose. This came up. And it came up through Cynthia, you know, not responding. And her story about having the baby with the, the horrible ear pain. And man, could you have drawn that out? go to the doctor and get drops and la la and this is a problem she's had her whole life because of this and it's common childhood it could have been a whole huge enormous thing but instead you chose not to respond you chose to go what would i be doing if she was fine and boom and i had the same situation happen where um somebody had reached out to me and and, and it was this common every week theme of this isn't happening for me. I'm doing all this effort and, and the results I want are not happening, not happening. And last night I received again the exact same message. And I was like, not responding. <laughs> went and got in the jacuzzi instead and went and did this instead. And the funny thing is, is the, the, the commentary of this person ceased. It stopped. They weren't there anymore. And the next thing that came up was a completely different subject. So I don't know. What do you think? I can ask a que the question again. Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, do you think not responding helps you get to your desires quicker? Like manifestations quicker? And can you give more examples? I mean, honestly, it depends on what each one of us believe like I can believe that it takes me there quicker so it's going to take me there quicker but if I believe that it's not going to take me there quicker then it's not so good yeah. answer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there was something else that I wanted to say I think that when you were answering the, the previous question about um, um, what was the first question about? Um, the first question was getting frustrated that manifestations oh, were yeah, not happening. Yeah. And I was saying by just not responding. Yeah, not responding. Yeah. But that is not responding to what, you know, because yeah. it's interesting. There is this example that you just gave about not responding to someone telling you a message that you don't no longer want to hear anymore but in this other person what she wouldn't be responding to is to herself you know yeah because when and and this goes back to practicing self-awareness what we were discussing before in the previous podcast is you detach from this version of you that is <laughs> and you look at it you know but you look at it and you can look at it without judgment, you know, like I was saying, like, oh, look at what my human is doing, you know, and like, you can laugh at it. So in this case, she wouldn't be responding to this version of herself that feels the lack, right? And you can like go one step away from it and say like, oh, I am the God. I and I can see myself in this human experience experiencing lack and wanting something to happen and then not respond to that so it's interesting this difference between not responding to the physical appearances and the physical experience 
And the other is to have enough self-awareness to say, look at what I'm doing. Look at how I'm being that I don't like and then not respond to that. That is an interesting, you know, self-awareness exercise. Um, so yeah, I think that just that having answer. self-awareness is, it's not only the practice of not responding that you can say it's going to take you to your desires faster because you can believe not responding is going to take you faster or not. Yeah. But just the practice of the self-awareness that allows you to not respond to yourself that self-awareness, I do believe that it can take you to things faster because it's just recognizing what you're doing, how you're feeling. And actually the self-awareness allows you to exercise your free will, if you will, to exercise your choice, your power of choosing. Because if you are being yeah, 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 then well, you're probably going to manifest more. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but if you have the self-awareness to say, oh, look what I'm doing. I'm going to choose something else. Yeah. Just the practice of the self-awareness allows you to choose. And when you choose something else, then you manifest something else. So I do see that practicing self-awareness can help you to manifest something new faster. That if you don't practice it and you keep being the same version of yourself that you don't want to be anymore. Yeah. I love that. And I think it has also to do with, you know, my seeing these people as how they want to see themselves right so there's this one person that wants to manifest you know let's say winning the lottery so the only way i can serve her is me seeing her as that satisfied excited i love my life you know you know and that that's that is and again that goes back to a subject we've talked about before that's the big greatest gift we can give anybody in our life is to see them so happy so joyful you know just absolutely loving their life that these kind of questions don't need to arise and for me i love what you were saying about having that self-awareness having that self-awareness and being willing to go yeah i'm not available for that anymore I'm not available for that outfit, that mm. state of being. Yeah, that's not who I am. I love the tone in which you said that, you know, because it's not available for that. There is no drama. There is no pain. There is no fighting. There is no suffering. There is no effort. It's just like, mm, no, thank you. You know, it's just so easy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, I, I I agree. That was wonderful. Yeah, and it it it, it there. It was funny because earlier you were saying some uh, talking about something, and that came up in my mind too. Was like it's just the lack of effort. Yeah, there's no effort. You're not pushing against. You're not trying to shut something down. You're just nah. <laughs> I'm giving that to the goodwill. They can have that outfit. <laughs> I'm not wearing that anymore. All right. So we had another one. It's funny how all these are so related, of course. Um, okay. So I have a statement where I always, where I used to say, and it's an Abdullah one, where it says, you don't ask how when you're already there. Right? You don't ask how when you're already there. Um, and this person said, this feels like such deep truth. Can you go more into it? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> go girl, go. Uh, you know, I, it's funny because I was reading, ah, I, I seem to be reading a lot of books. <laughs> I was reading another <laughs> book uh, from uh, one of Neville's students. Uh, oh, well, oh my God, what's her name? Uh, well, uh, I posted things from her on my Instagram. Um, and one of the things that I posted actually is that quote. I didn't know that it came from Abdullah, but she says the same thing. And yeah. it's like, if you already feel that your desire has been fulfilled, then it follows that you are not wondering how it's going to happen. Exactly. You know? <laughs> like you cannot, yeah. it's either it has already happened or it hasn't, you know, and that is so interesting because it's like you have to face 
yourself and say, oh my God, I'm not actually in the state of the wish fulfilled, you know, yeah. <laughs> because you're wondering about the how, how it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. And the thing is, at least from Neville, it's like, well, go into the feeling of the wish fulfilled, feel that it has already happened and then it's going to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's such, such an interesting topic. <laughs> It, it, it's a huge topic. It's a wonderful topic. And again, we're back in ease, right? Yeah. yeah. Why, would, why would I even discuss this if I'm already there? Why would I even talk about this? Why would I read that book? Why would I do any of these things if I'm already there? Mm. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, so... It's like, at least I see it in these three stages, like the state, you get the desire. And then the next stage is like, Neville says, surrender to your physical desire. It's like, you have the desire and then you can go to, ah, it feels so nice that this happened. You know, like you accept the gift, like you accept the gift of that desire as already fulfilled you know and you actually feel the satisfaction but for some reason sometimes instead of feeling that satisfaction we go into the other like how is it going to happen you know yeah. and then to get out of that out of that state we have all the tools you know because you don't need to use the tools in order to get to the state of the virtual field but if you need them then use them and they work um but then you start practicing the tools, you know, to get into the state of the wish fulfilled, like practicing uh, imagining things or isn't it wonderful or I remember when or in inner conversations and all these things to put yourself in the steps uh, in the uh, yeah, in the shoes of the person who already has that thing. And if you keep doing that, eventually you get to what Neville calls the, the sab Sabbath. I don't know how you pronounce that in, in English. The Sabbath? Uh, you know? Well, okay. Sabbath? Sabbath? Okay. The Sabbath? It's, yeah. It's yeah. that moment when you stop working. You stop doing the work yeah. and you relax because you actually feel that you already have it. That is the moment when you stop doing all the tools and all the practices because you actually start to feel natural that it's already happened and then you're not thinking like oh when is it gonna happen how is it gonna happen i need to affirm i need to do my yeah. affirmations i need to do all these things you naturally feel satisfied and then you stop doing the things um i you know i tell you i it's like when i receive a text of a job offer or something that surprises me. There was no effort in that. There was no trying to have that happen. There was no using any tools. It just popped up and it was like, oh, and in that moment of going, oh, this is exciting. I'm going to respond. There's no, there's no effort of anything. I'm just in this flow state of just responding to it. And now all of a sudden, so last night I was watching America's Got Talent and there's this, I guess during commercials, they'll ask audience audience members if they want to sing and there's this young girl who's like yeah I'll sing and she just starts belting out and she belt she was so amazing that all the judges who pay no attention during the commercials during do all this stuff all stopped what they were doing and even Simon Cowell who was in the back comes running out from the back and goes who was that you know and and in the so all of a sudden, they're taking this young girl out of the audience, putting her up on the stage, which is something they don't do. And they're like, go ahead and sing, go ahead and do it. And they decide to go against, I know, I got to, I'll, I'll put the link to that in here. And they're just like, go ahead and sing. And so she sings Amazing Grace and she sings one section of it. And Simon Kell's like, keep going, keep going. And she, long story short, she ends up getting the golden buzzer. She, I mean, she wasn't even supposed to be up on the stage. She wasn't part, you know, she had been trying, but her father just takes, if you live in Pasadena here in California, you can go 
watch America's Got Talent all the time. You just buy the tickets and go. You can be in the audience all the time. And her, her father was always taking her to it because that's what she wanted to do is watch. And she was like, someday I'm going to be up on the stage. Someday. And, you know, she didn't, she was just herself. She was in that flow in that moment. She wasn't sitting there going, okay, I manifested. I focused right. Okay, I did my me- I did my meditations this morning. So it's going to happen. She just was in the flow, in the joy. And it's like, boom, boom, boom. This is happening. These people are picking you and they're getting you up on the stage. And oh my God, Simon Cowell is paying attention to you. And, and now you got the golden buzzer. And I mean, she's 11 years old. <laughs> she's this little thing. You should hear her sing. And it, it just, you know, there's that in that moment that she's singing and all these people start paying attention and all these people are cheering for her and all this. There's no stopping and thinking. It's just happening, right? It's like when you wake up in the morning, it's just happening. You didn't do anything to make yourself wake up. It's just happening. It's this natural happening, happening, happening. And This is where, you know, I'm like this whole thinking about I've got to stop and manifest. I've got to do these tools. I've got to use these processes to manifest, to do it, to do it. That's where I'm like going, wait a minute. (laughs) What did you do to wake up this morning? What what, what, What manifestation process did you do to wake up this morning? Not a damn thing. Can we just go to that let's just just, let's just go to that and yeah you know it happens and it's there and I and I love it and yeah I got to show you that link because it's just so wonderful to watch um and you'll of course you're gonna cry your eyes out and I don't know if they staged this I don't know it doesn't matter it it is is wonderful because you know of course her father who takes her there has stage four cancer and and they said if you want a million dollars what would you do and she's like I would help with cancer research for my father that's when I start rolling my eyes and going "Ah, okay but you know maybe not maybe it was just this is just so so wonderful and heartwarming and you know exciting to see but you know for me I was just like going oh I've had those moments where the things are just flowing 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 and it's it's just happening and where I'm at right now is one of these things right and then there's those moments where something not wanted arises and yeah you can use your tools absolutely because they're there and because you just manifested them and because you're that amazing or you can just go eh, doesn't matter either way I can't be less of a god so it's all good it's always going to work out it's always going to blow me away ah. yeah and just to be clear you know <laughs> nothing wrong if you're using the tools like Mm -hmm. there's no shame and again going back to what am I doing wrong you know it's not because you're using tools that you're not somehow like oh my god I didn't go into the state of the wishful feel like automatically and I needed to I don't know meditate so I suck at manifestation like no (laughs) you know it's like fine everything you're doing is fine and naturally I think the more you let's say you're using the tools every day and then you start manifesting what you want naturally you're going to realize like oh I do it because of who I am not because of the tools that I'm using so the more you do it the less tools you're going to believe that you need and then you're going to start you know flowing and going into it like right away and all of that and then if you ever need to go back to using tools then go back you know there's no shame there's nothing right or wrong it's just like do whatever works for you but I think in the end the more I don't, I don't know the most important thing but at least to me the most important thing is just realizing who you are becoming aware of it and then going into what is beyond manifesting the money manifesting the body manifesting the relationship it's just after that or maybe before or in the middle I don't know it doesn't matter but you will come to the realization of wait a minute manifesting is great but actually realizing that I am God that I am unconditional love that I am one with the trees and the birds that I am one with you and like all of these it's like the 
wow, you know, like another gift on top of all these manifestations. So yeah, yeah. chill. <laughs> yeah. For me, the whole what am I doing wrong is the fact that you think you can do something wrong. <laughs> you know, again, there's that I'm not available for that. You know, and and the whole not responding is so deep within that. I love it. I love the option. I love that option to be able to go, yeah, no, I'm not available for that. I yeah. love that. I, I I just so adore it. And, and sometimes, sometimes that can even come when you are fed up with something, you know, like it can come like, yeah, I'm not available for that. Or we can come <laughs> like, we're so fed up. And I'm not yeah, <laughs> angry, yeah, slam the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're so angry and fed up with yourself and you're, Boo, you know, or your <laughs> BS that you just say, like, I'm not doing that anymore. Like, and yeah. you made the decision, you make the decision, but it is a decision in whatever like mood that you make it. It's just a decision that I'm not having this anymore. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's powerful because I I've been I've been remembering a time where I did that. I sh completely shifted my reality out of anger, out of fed upness, out of you know, and I've told you the story before where I had a horrible, horrible back problems for a long, long, long time. And it just wasn't getting better. And it was just, and then finally one day I just, I was like, this is my fucking reality. I am tired. No, no more. This is my reality. I, I do not accept this anymore. And poof, that was it. There was no more. It was gone. But it was, again, it wasn't something I could have forced you know i couldn't have been going okay this person over here said i got to get mad and say this is my reality and then that'll fix my problem it just was something that happened naturally and it, it arose out of being fed up and being tired of being in pain and just going no <laughs> no no more yeah and it, it, it was just, it, it was wonderful. It, it was just so, and I was just, it's so funny that we bring this up because I was just remembering that this week where I was like going, this is my reality. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah. So whether it arises from anger or it arises from a state of peace. It, and I was thinking about that the other day. I was thinking about these people who, um, you know, the Buddhist monk who climbs up on top of a, you know, a mountain in Tibet and they're, you know, and they go into the monastery and they're there for 10, 000, you know, 10 years. Do, are they closer to God than you are? Because you, you're down here in the trenches and you watch news every day and, 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 you know, listening to all the horrible things. And, and it's just like, you know, which one's more godly? neither one they're both you know they're both just as amazing they're both gods having fantastic amazing experiences you can't be less of a god you can't be less of a god you just those choices those experiences yeah yeah Woohoo! well i know you have to go to the post office so um we will end this and uh, we love, love interacting with you guys with your questions um, or statements or whatever. You know, you can always find us all our information's in the links below. Don't hesitate to, you know, what's your beliefs in these questions we asked today? What were your thoughts? What were your ideas? You know, we, we love playing with everybody's fun, interesting where they're playing right now yes yeah. yes please do share your questions experiences success stories uh yeah so thank you so much for being here with us today and if you're watching this on youtube don't forget to subscribe share comment like and turn on notifications and yeah thank you so much yay take care guys see you on the next one see you bye